each egg. A dream of a graceful, resplendent aviator. Hatching. Growing. Waiting. Finally extending wings. Welcome to the colorful world of Taiwan moths. Whether you enjoyed it or not, raising silkworms is a childhood experience shared by most of us who grew up in Taiwan. But how many of you know when silkworms first threaded their way into the Chinese cultural fabric? As the story goes, a silkworm cocoon fell into a filled teacup of Chinese Empress Leizu one afternoon in 2640 BC. By the time she had fished it out, the Empress found that it had loosened into a mass of glistening thread, which, on further inspection, was found to be strong and very light. Her order for cloth, made from these cocoons, marked the first use of silk in recorded history. China's silk industry reached its apex 3,000 years later, when silk was already a luxury product known and treasured across the civilized world. Chinese silk exported along the so-called Silk Road, fueled trade and prosperity in Asia and Europe, and unprecedented contact between the two continents. In Taiwan, the silkworm has woven its threads through the island's cultural and religious foundations. Alishan Mountain is one of Taiwan's top tourism destinations. It is home to Shoujin Temple, which pays annual homage to its main deity, the Shentian Emperor, on the third day of Lunar March. This date coincides almost perfectly with the seasonal arrival of Owl Moths. The so-called Moths of Heaven are celebrated as blessings of the Shentian Emperor. Moths are commemorated in ceiling carvings above the temple's main altar. This female atlas moth flaps profusely as she lays egg after egg. It is a process she will repeat hundreds of times over. Each has a shot at hatching, growing, pupating, and becoming an adult to continue the cycle once again. It is the cycle of life for all insects undergoing complete metamorphosis, including moths. Moth eggs come in a rainbow of different colors, yellow, white, and black. Most are encased in a gluey film and laid on leaves. Although exceptions, like endoclita, abound. These atlas moth eggs are set to undergo an amazing transformation. It is just the beginning of the journey to come. Lepidoptera has traditionally been demarcated into two wholly distinct groups, butterflies and moths. Textbooks define butterflies as diurnal and resting with wings erect, and moths as nocturnal and resting with wings flat. Actually, Many exceptions exist to this overly simplistic taxonomy. Recent studies are making it increasingly clear that, from an evolutionary perspective, butterflies and moths are biological sisters. Butterflies, in other words, are simply moths that do their flying by day. The title of the internationally acclaimed film La Papillon 
invokes a French word used to describe both butterflies and moths. Atlas moths are the rock stars of the moth world. Known colloquially as snakeheads, they rank among the world's largest moth species. Atlas moths lay their eggs on branches or leaves near edible vegetation. The caterpillar is a voracious eating machine that will grow to many thousand times its original weight in a few weeks' time. Eating, it seems, is the overriding objective of these atlas moth caterpillars. As waistlines grow, they will molt many times before finally coming to a stop. Unfortunately, not all caterpillars will survive to maturity. A gauntlet of predators that includes lizards, birds, and ants covet them as quick and easy meals. But they are not unprepared, and caterpillars have evolved an impressive array of self-defense mechanisms designed to see them through. The characteristic stretch and pull locomotion of geometer caterpillars is the source of their popular nickname, inchworms. In danger, inchworms camouflage themselves as ordinary twigs. Other caterpillars follow alternative strategies. The distinctive colors of the Meliona bacillus caterpillar remind predators of its repulsive taste. They're a visual advertisement that shouts, disgusting flavor guaranteed. After emerging as a beautifully colored adult moth, Miliona bacillus colors continue to warn predators from acting on hungry thoughts. The eye-like spots of other caterpillars can confuse potential predators who mistake the spots for the cold stare of a snake's beady eyes. Our atlas moth caterpillars are now ready to pupate. Curling up into a leaf, they wrap themselves in layer upon layer of silk thread. Now one with their surroundings and, hopefully, safe from hungry eyes. While a cocoon protects the defenseless atlas moth pupa, most cocoonless pupa, sluggish and vulnerable, find protection in rolled up leaves or beneath the soil. The decorative wing patterns and colors of some moths provide clever camouflage. Withered leaves and tree bark come surprisingly alive. The clothes moth takes things a step further by spinning a camouflaging cloak of chewed hairs, dander, fiber, and sand. When startled, moths have even more tricks up their proverbial sleeves. 
啄蕊尾周耳。那为什么叫啄蕊尾呢？是因为这个腹部的地方有很多非常修长的鳞片，那有点像是那个花蕊的形状，所以我们叫它啄蕊尾周耳。那当它受到一些扰动或刺激的时候，它会把它的这个尾部、腹部往上举，那可以做到。这个类似于惊吓它的天敌的作用，它比方说，假设我是一只鸟，想要吃它，但一靠近它，突然把腹部升起来，可能就会被吓到。Meanwhile, Atlas moth pupae, wrapped snugly in their cocoon, experience a magical transformation. Dawn rises on a day several weeks later. An auspicious morning for our atlas moth. Today is when a former caterpillar, transformed over weeks of sustained immobility, will emerge as a newborn navigator of the skies. Bodily fluids flow slowly into vessels that will expand to create the superstructure for wings. The moth rests beneath the silvery glow of the moon. The comb-like antenna on male atlas moths are longer than those on females. Moths use antenna to perceive and interpret the surrounding environment, and some cleverly use serrated feet like a brush to keep these all-important sensors in top working condition. Scent glands in the abdomen of the mature female atlas releases pheromones that are easily recognized and tracked by male moth antennae. This seminal event in the life of all moths is essential to bring into existence a new generation. In the brief span of two weeks, she must find a mate and complete the final part of her life's journey. Moths flit and circle beneath a street lamp, but the mesmerizing light obscures the myriad dangers in the shadows. Nighttime lights are a beacon to moth predators as well, who are glad to wait their chance for an easy feast. Moths are an important source of food for many wild animals. And hunger would threaten should they disappear. At dawn. Moths instinctively seek protective shelter. Able to avoid night predators, they are poorly equipped to handle the keen-eyed Steers babbler and other birds. Birds know instinctively that the day's best pickings are to be had at daybreak. Near homes and buildings, sunset ends the day and announces the start of the nighttime show. Actors and actresses fuss, preen, and prepare for their grand entrance. Romance pervades the still, humid air—a misty dreamscape perfect for the moth's upcoming performance. First on stage are the noctuid and snout moths. Followed closely by the hawk moth, 
a fast flying species with jet fighter like wings. Notodonids and geometers then make a gradual entrance. With the larger moth species showing up slightly later. Luna moths, royal moths, and giant silkworm moths join the melee, flitting and dancing about until the crescendo, when things begin to clear and return to calm. Most insects are diurnal, active during daylight hours. Those graceful pixies, flitting through the sunlit grasses, however, are not butterflies. Look again! Colorful burnet moths flit from flower to flower, gathering nectar. These daytime dancers perform their colorful, elegant soirees in the sunshine. Are they moths or butterflies? Miliona bacillus caterpillars feed mainly on southern hemisphere conifers. When startled, they drop to safety, suspended in midair on a thin thread of silk. Further threats to send them plummeting to the ground and scurrying to shelter. Wasp moths are a peculiar group. Also active during the day, these visual tricksters wear a fashionable cloak of yellow and black stripes, clever camouflage that mimics its namesake, the wasp, and warns off potential predators. Look, is that a hummingbird? Often mistaken for a hummingbird, the hawk moth has a finely tuned jet fighter physique that makes it one of the insect world's ablest flyers. They pull incredible mid-air turns, come to a sudden and complete stop, and deftly dart from flower to flower, collecting nectar and, courtesy of the equally cleverly designed flower, copious amounts of pollen. These are butterflies and moths. The larvae of both are called caterpillars. The myriad species of Le Papillon make for a huge and highly varied collection. Moths sometimes display the ostentatious beauty normally associated with butterflies. The colors of Chrysaglia magnifica, Luna, Milkweed tussock, Arismia pulchella, Macrobrocus gigas, and Agathea latea often lead people to doubt they are true moths. But it's true. Nothing left to doubt. They are dyed in the wool, no holds barred, moths. Moths account for 4,200 of the 4,600 known species of the order Lepidoptera in Taiwan. But why does Taiwan have so many varieties? Surrounded by sea, Taiwan is an independent ecosystem distinct from its neighbors. But this was not always so. A prehistoric land link with mainland Asia and the Japan archipelago left the island with many species also found in Eurasia and Japan. Typhoon winds have also blown new species in from the islands of Southeast Asia. These have since created their own niche or evolved into new species. Taiwan's high central mountains have also created distinct ecosystems. For those unable to fly or limited, like moths, to flitting about at low altitudes, this geological barrier effectively split the island into several isolated sections, which, over millennia, have fostered today's exceptionally high species diversity. Experts estimate the total number of moth species in Taiwan at over 6,000. This means there likely remain some 2,000 distinct species yet to be discovered and cataloged. Domestic moth research is still in its earliest stages, and the need for more talented researchers in this field is great.
After bird and butterfly watching, moth watching is enjoying growing popularity worldwide to educate and promote understanding. The Taiwan Endemic Species Research Institute has sponsored moth survey research camps and a Taiwan Moth Night. Participants share observation notes online, learn about the significance of moth diversity in Taiwan, and better appreciate the importance of moths in the global ecological balance. Global warming is raising average temperatures in normally cool alpine habitats and shrinking the living space of organisms that rely on this climate zone. Extensive worldwide scientific studies into the effects on alpine vegetation as well as on wildlife, including moths, that rely on high mountain plants promise to shed new light on the impact of global warming on Taiwan. A recent study of Borneo high mountain moths published in 2011 found populations gradually migrating to higher elevations. The limited research available on high mountain moths in Taiwan leaves significant room for future studies and ecological attention. Whether you enjoyed your childhood experience with silkworms or not, it probably never crossed your mind that Taiwan is home to one of the world's most diverse and exciting moth populations. From now on, wherever you are, at whatever hour of the day or night, Make sure to take the time to stop and watch Taiwan's wonderful variety of moths. Examine their different characteristics and behaviors. Think about their value and place in the ecosystem. Moth watching is as educational as it is fun. The life of the Atlas moth enriches and enlivens our own existence. Her life, while short, is nevertheless exceptional. Her hungry babies are at the cusp of their own brilliant adventure. We wish them well. Grow healthy and strong. Spread your wings and fly into the heavens. Find your mate and write yet another brilliant stanza in the opulent aria that celebrates life here on Earth.